Hey guys, and welcome once again to MCYFL's Top 10 Plays of the Week, where each week we research tons and tons and tons of footage. And if we're really lucky, I think Kevin will give us a shot of his crack research team as they pour through the footage to find your Top 10 Plays of the Week. Last week it was something very special. Number two, Drake Eason of the Falcons from his own 10 rips off and he's headed for a 90-yard touchdown. But no, William Newsom catches him at the five-yard line. He had a great offensive play and a great defensive play all in one. There's going to be more excitement this week, and I'm sure Kevin will find us one. Kevin, what you got for us? Well, Greg, it is tough coming up with the top 10 plays of the week every week, but one gentleman that helps me out does a great job, oddly enough, is Junior Rattler head coach Wayne Rush. And Wayne is, well, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. Wake up, big fella. Wake up. We got to do top 10 plays of the week, man. Are you okay? You got to wake up, big guy. Wayne, uh, it looks like Wayne is down and out. You know what, Wayne? You go ahead and rest, big guy. I'm going to go ahead and do the top 10 plays of the week. Let's start with honorable mention plays, shall we? Was he snoring? I don't know. Anyway, let's check out Junior Cowboys taking on the Broncos. Cowboys punting the ball to number two, Kyron Roberts who takes it from his own 37-yard line. Can he get the corner? He certainly can. And there goes Roberts, taking it the distance. 63 yards, honorable mention play, number one. Next up, Pee Wee Division calls sticking on the Cougars. Colts already up 7-0. Looking for more quarterback Caden Terrence. The pass to Bryant Jamerson going backwards and then goes, eh, it's a lot quicker if I just go forwards. And that's exactly what he does. Turns himself around, takes it the distance. One more look. Terrence has been hot in the Pee Wee Division passing that football. The pass to Jamerson going backwards, trying to get away from the defenders. And he goes, you know, if I turn around and go forward, that's the way to go. Nicely done. 49 yards in all for Jamerson. Honorable mention play number two. And our final HM play, staying in the Pee Wee Division, Saints taking on the Hawks, and this is Devon Johnson, the quarterback, taking the direct snap, and look at the move, going back inside. He saw that opening, he is gone. 40 yards in all for Johnson, the Saints would win the game, and that's honorable mention plays for week number three. Hey Wayne, should we tell everybody about December 23rd, 1972, and how that played a significant part in football? Well. Never mind. Uh, you know what? I'll just go and take care of it. Top 10 plays coming at you. 10! Play number 10, Pee Wee Packers taking on the Dolphins on Saturday on field B, and the Packers playing well. Quarterback Grayson Bowers looking for receiver Elijah Webb, who comes up with the catch. One more look. Grayson Bowers looking for Webb, but there's Mason Sears playing some great defense, but no. Webb coming up with a gem of a catch. Nicely done by Elijah Webb, and that's play number 10. Nine! Play number nine, junior division action. Falcons taking all the Kings. Falcons with the football, the handoff up the middle. But check out what happens here. All of a sudden, the ball's headed the other way. That's because Jamiris Owens is taking it the other way for the Canes. Touchdown for the team in yellow. One more look, the ball up the middle, and there, is Owens right there. Watch what he does. He's just going to strip the ball away from the running back, and there goes Owens. 30 yards in all, going to take it the distance. Canes win big on Saturday, and that's play number nine. Hey! This is number 22, Uriah Savino, who plays for the Pee Wee Wolfpack, taking on the Rappers on Saturday. Wolfpack with the football, Landon Serrano at quarterback, handing the ball off to Savino, and check out the moves. Breaking tackles, decides to come back to his right, making the big move between two Rattlers, and he will not be denied. Taking it the distance, 48 yards in all for Savino, having a great year, and that's play number eight. Play number seven, staying in the Pee Wee Division, Knights taking on the Falcons. Knights with the football, faced with a fourth and 23. Well, this is Marquise Williams. Will it be completed? It will. To Dorian Washington and Everett Lawrence trying to make the tackle for the Falcons. Not going to happen. Washington is free, and he's going to take it 88 yards into the end zone. Touchdown for the Knights on a fourth and 23, mind you. And that's play number seven. Play number six, senior division action. Rattlers taking on the Wolfpack. Rattlers with the football. Quarterback Austin Kate looking for Jakari Washington, but no. The pass is picked off. A nifty INT by number six, Nathan Harvey. One more look. Kate looking for Washington. His favorite receiver overthrows him, but there's Harvey. What an effort by number six, Nathan Harvey, coming up with the INT for the Wolfpack. And that's play number six. Ah! 
The date is December 23rd, 1972. Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Oakland Raiders. Terry Bradshaw in all kinds of trouble, faced with a fourth down last gasp effort for the Steelers. The ball knocked away, but no. Somehow Franco Harris comes up with the football. He's going to take it the distance. Touchdown for the Steelers. They win the game. How did that happen, you ask? Well, Bradshaw over the middle. The ball knocked away. Dubbed the immaculate reception. It is still to this day one of the greatest plays in NFL history. And I guess you're asking yourself, Kevin, what does this have to do with the MCYFL? Well, Senior Kane's taking on the Wildcats. Kane's with the football. Quarterback Michael McKnight looking for Jerry Cook the third. The ball tipped away and somehow caught by Caleb Sanford, who's going to take it the distance. 30 yards for the touchdown. One more look. McKnight up top. The ball knocked away by Brady Bruce. And just like Franco Harris back on December 23rd, 1972, somehow, some way, Caleb Sanford gets a hold of that football, and there he goes. Touchdown for the Wildcats, play number five. Staying with the NFL theme in the junior division, Colts taking on the Hawks, and this is Jakari Jelks. The pass to Michael Sessler, maneuvering his body. Was he in bounds to make the catch? Yes, he was. Touchdown for Sessler and the Colts. One more look, Jelks throwing it to the outside of Sessler, so he has to maneuver his body around. Somehow he's going to come up with the catch, and check this out. Both feet were in in the NFL. That's a catch, and it's a catch in the MCYFL as well. Great job by Sessler, play number four. Pee Wee Nice taking on the Falcons. Knights trail 8 to 6, looking for some points. Dorian Washington, the quarterback, going deep, looking for Jakari Boother. Will he complete the pass? No. Check out the incredible interception by number 11, Bryson Lorenzetti. What a pick. One more look. Lorenzetti stretching out, coming up with that football. That was a huge play in the game for the Falcons. Great job by Lorenzetti, the big time INT. And that's play number three. This is senior Colt running back Leonard James. What a day he had on Saturday. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, check out the run by James as he breaks a couple of tackles, keeps moving, breaks another tackle, keeps his balance, and there he goes. Touchdown for James. One of six touchdowns on the day for number six. One more look. Here he is breaking a couple of tackles right here. Looks like he's going to go down, but no. He stays on his feet, and then he has to battle another Falcon, and they twist him around. Almost falls, but stays on his feet, and there he goes. 43 yards. Great run by Leonard James. That's why he is play number two. Whoa! Play number one is all about deja vu. Junior Wildcats taking on the nice to start the game off, the opening kickoff. And the ball is going to be kicked to number nine, Brandon Miller, who scoops it up at his own 12-yard line, moving to his left, season opening, and he's got a few blockers in front of him. And check out Miller. There he goes. Taking it 88 yards for the touchdown, but wait a minute. Head referee Johnny Flowers says, nope, we have unsportsmanlike conduct against one team, head-to-head -head contact against the other ones, helmet-to-helmet -helmet stuff, so we're going to do this again. So here come the Wildcats kicking off, and guess who they kick it to? Number nine, Brandon Miller. And you don't think he's going to run this one back too, do you? A little deja vu, like, I think that's why this is the top play, because he did it twice, folks. One from 83 yards, this one from 68 yards. Brandon Miller, get that guy some Gatorade. Great job by Brandon Miller. Touchdown for the Knights. They would win on Saturday. And that's our top play of the week. Well, there you go, folks. Once again, some great top ten plays of the week here at MCYFL. I'm Greg Packwood. It's been my pleasure. Don't forget to check us out on our webpage, mcyfl.us. Also, check us out on Facebook. We'll be looking forward to seeing you next week with more top ten plays of the week here at MCYFL.